I'm Anil Kumar and we'll discuss input output machine in this particular video. Let us say we have an input output machine that is something like this which converts numbers. So let us say we are giving some inputs to this and getting some outputs. Now inputs could be the numbers as given here, let's say inputs and the outputs are the numbers given in the second column, we call them outputs. The machine performs some operations to convert these numbers from input to output. We need to find the operations which the machine performs so that we get the required output. So the question here is, the table shows the input and output for this machine. Write the numbers and operations as the rule. Now when we feed in 3, we get 3 as the output. If we feed in 4, we get 5 as the output. For 5, we get 7. For 6, we get 9. And for 7, we get 11 as the output. So what should the machine do so that we get this kind of an operation? How to find that rule? That is the main criteria. So let's figure that out. Best way to find is, the numbers are increasing by 1. Let us find how the output is increasing. So output moves from 3 to 5, so it increases by 2. Again, it goes from 5 to 7, it again increases by 2, and that is the trend, right? So we, what we observe here is that the output increases by 2. That means times 2 is a factor here. Every time it is increasing by 2. So we'll do times 2 as one of the operations. Well, if I do 3 times 2, what do I get? Let me try. So we do 3 times 2, we get 6. We want 3, not 6. So what should we do now? So we have to take away something to get 3. The number seems to be 3. So if I take away 3, what I get is 3. Let me try with 4 now. 4 times 2 is 8. And if I take away 3, what do I get? I do get 5. That is correct. So that means the operation with the machine is, is doing is times 2, take away 3, right? Let me test next number. If I do 5 times 2, I get 10. And if I do minus 3, I do get 7. So that is correct. So that is how we can get the relation between input and output. So let's have many other numbers and if I write 100 here, then what shall be the output? Well, for 100, it should be 100 times 2, which is 200. Take away 3, that means 3 less than 200, 197. Do you see that? So that number should be 197. So with this rule, we can find output for any input. So that is a big advantage. So you do your calculations and find the output for 50 as the input and 75 as the input. So, okay, so you'll do 50 times 2, 75 times 2, whatever you get here, take away 3 and write down your answer, okay? So that is an exercise for you. But I hope with this video, you learn how to find a rule which connects input to output. We'll take a few more examples on this. I'm Anil Kumar. And you can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.